Alrighty, got another daily. What have we here? <laughs> Very plundery. This seems like a kingdom I'd expect a bot to be decent at. Weird halfway engine with a lot of good treasures. Uh, draw is hunting grounds. Village is wealthy village. Trashing, pickaxe, rope, counterfeit, cage. Uh, lots of plus buy and some gains. Not the best band of misfits of all time. Uh, inherited wealthy village. So we're going to start with a cantrip. Fawning. Fawning on cage is actually kind of. <laughs> that's not a bad fawning card. Like you, If you take a, a, a cage. Or, I'm not going to keep this up because the art on fawning is hideous. But if you take a cage early. Obviously, the problem is it pops when you buy your first province, but then you get a free cage off the province, and you can just set the stuff right back aside. Uh, I don't know if that'll happen, but that seems nifty. So, uh, obviously, I want to replace an estate. I think 98% like of the time, at least, that's the correct we want inherited. Estates are just worse than coppers. Uh, what's the goal here? Obviously, a bunch of wealthy villages and hunting grounds are in order. Um... Ropes are good. I could see taking an armory to get a bunch of ropes. Uh, so th these bottom five, you know, it's not like a standard opening where you buy two things and then you shuffle. Whatever I buy here, there's a one six chance I draw it next turn when I play the Wealthy Village. Um, but more likely what's going to happen is I'm going to draw something like card that I buy plus three coppers plus this estate. I'm going to draw one of these coppers off the top. Uh, so what card would I like to have in that hand? Um, hmm. So first thing that jumps out is Armory. Um, plain Armory, turn three, top deck a rope for turn four. That sounds pretty good. Uh, could also just buy the rope directly. Also not unreasonable. Rope is also, like, all this is a little bit out the window because of the non-standard shuffle, but both Armory and Roper cards that you'd like to see earlier rather than later in the shuffle. Um, like both of those are better turn three than turn four because you get to resolve the effect of them turn four. Uh, Cage is actually also pretty good here. Like if, if you know you're going to draw the Cage with just four of the jump cards, you get clean really fast. Uh, I like the sound of that. Yeah. I want to buy a cage. <laughs> Ironically, that should be nicer if I had the, the $3 hand first, because then I'd be lining up my cage with more estates. Um, but this will be all right. OK, so here, definitely either armory or rope. Uh, I can see the case for either. Armory is going to get you more ropes, and rope's a good card here. Uh, but that might take longer to hit 5 and 6. And the the fives and sixes all look, or the, the fives. There's a bunch of fives and a six that look really good. Um, hmm. Also, something to think about. Tools is already a pretty good card to gain here, because you get copper. I'm about to have a cage in play, and then tools will be a third treasure. So if you line up tools with the wealthy village, tools can already start printing wealthy villages that will come with loots. Uh, I don't think I'd buy a tools right here because, actually, I mean, that's not even that unreasonable. I'm going to set all that aside, then the tools would almost certainly collide with the wealthy village. Uh, huh. Given that I can take a tools that also is going to gain a bunch of stuff, armory is suddenly looking a little bit less appealing. Like, why just gain fours when I can take a card that's going to gain whatever I want? I think I'm going to go for one rope first, and then straight on into the tools. And then the goal, hopefully, is to gain wealthy villages and buy hunting grounds. <laughs> I'd like to draw the estate. Thank you. Tools could be better. At least it rhymes with tools. That's uh, some form of synergy. 
Did I want a second tools? I'm not sure that was, <laughs> that was the right move. I, I reflex clicked that. Probably rope was a better buy there. I need to get to six, um, which you know I could do if I found my my jewels, but I did not. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure if any of these is better than nothing. Like I don't have any actual target for the vagrant. It potentially gets in the way of rope hitting the right cards to trash. Um, silver might be better than nothing as well. I mean, I have a little bit too much treasure in my deck and too little draw at the moment. But I think it'll be pretty easy to add hunting grounds quickly. I think silver's better than nothing. Um, I'm surely going to hit six, and once I hit six, I can um, add hunting grounds pretty quickly. <laughs> I discard everything that's not a cantrip. Actually, even one of the villages, too. I can't possibly need more than one village on the top um, for the single hunting grounds I'm about to have. But there would be a danger in finding all of my villages on the top, and then bottom decking the hunting grounds and having no villages the next turn. And are these better than nothing? I don't think I'm going to have enough treasures uh, in the near future to set aside on cage anymore. Is Vagrant better than nothing? It's not, not at all clear to me that it is. Um, like a theoretical advantage to Vagrant would be something like if I got Staff and Hammer or something, I, having an extra action around I could use to draw whatever the Hammer gains using the Staff. And so does like a generic cantrip could have some value in the deck. Um, are there any other benefits to Vagrant? Not, not really. I mean the, the drawbacks aren't huge either. It's just like having more blank cantrips in your starting hand might mean, for example, it's harder to line up the rope with the coppers to trash. I think it's most likely to just not matter either way whether I buy a vagrant there. Bot has two pickaxes already. That's a lot of pickaxes. Where's my hunting grounds? I was... Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was trying to avoid the scenario in which I um, find all the wealthy villages and no hunting grounds. Okay, so... You know what would be... Actually, I was going to say, you know, be a great loot here is Insignia to top deck stuff. But actually, Sextant, for once ever, is going to be kind of useful here. I can gain a wealthy village and a hunting grounds, and then do this to top deck them. And I was anticipating having more ropes than I do. Uh, I only have the one. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm actually going to take a counterfeit. Uh, finish off these coppers. Also, in hindsight, maybe the, maybe the cage was better than nothing on that turn where I was deliberating. It's like in my head, I had envisioned having a number of ropes much greater than one, and I figured the coppers would take care of themselves pretty fast. Um, and that just didn't happen for whatever reason. Save that one for the puzzle box. Alrighty. And we're already looking to threaten a pile out. Hunting grounds can empty estates very easily. So I think it makes a lot of sense here. If I set aside a village, just take a bunch of extra hunting grounds and a pickaxe, I can pickaxe some hunting grounds to gain six estates for free plus two loots. And then uh, I feel like a pile out is going to happen if I do that somehow or other. So let's do this again. Staff could also conceivably be helpful. So I was drawing my deck already, um, and I just added another hunting grounds. So like I think, I think I already have enough hunting grounds to draw my deck and have two to spare if I need to. I might take one additional one to be safe, as long as I think the bot can't pile on me. We got two ropes and a chalice in play. I don't think they're overdrawing, right? Most of these hunting grounds are in my deck. What have I done? How did I go away? Go away, menu. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think the bot can pile out. I mean, the bot has the pickaxes. Um, so, like in theory, it can line up pickaxe and hunting grounds to do something similar. But I don't think it has the spare hunting grounds 
to target. I have one, two, th three in play, one top decked, one in my discard, right? Yeah, I have five of the six hunting grounds. There's no way the bot is pickaxing a hunting grounds next turn. So I think I can pretty safely buy one more. And I already got my pickaxe. I only need the one pickaxe to kill two hunting grounds because I have counterfeit and can counterfeit it. Um, I'm not sure what else I buy here that's better than nothing. Obviously, Hunting Grounds or Wealthy Village in the abstract would be pretty good targets. I don't feel like I need those to be able to, to pile next turn. And I don't really want to lower the piles more than necessary. I could take a functionally a third pickaxe, which would be all right, but not terribly important either. Um, Band of Misfits or uh, Armory. or well, I would just be using those to gain tools, probably, and then probably just makes more sense at that point to... Um, by tools directly. Um, maybe a second counterfeit to counterfeit the tools for extra gains. That could be a thing. Sure, let's do that. I don't think it mattered terribly much. Insignia, a good loot. I mean, <laughs> not in a general sense. <laughs> Insignia and doubloons are Two of the like the very worst two loots on average, um, but in this kingdom, insignia seems pretty good. I'm so glad they uh, they got the sword off of the buy and not off of the gains, because sword is kind of annoying when you have puzzle box. Can I get to the end of my deck without playing? Yeah, I have three hunting grounds to potentially trash now. As I say that, do I have a way to trash the third hunting grounds? Uh, I only have the one pickaxe. Uh, well, in any case, something good should happen here. Uh, I, Looking at this, this is, this is going to be a trivial win, but I nonetheless am kind of interested in how do I maximize the value of my deck. Um, so I got staff, meaning I can potentially gain stuff here and still um, and play it. So for example, tools gaining wealthy village puts a loot in my deck. Um, and then I can draw that off of the staff playing like the wealthy village of the hunting grounds. And it's gonna be helpful here for top decking like just the um, the good cards, like just the loot and not the wealthy village. Um, so I'm probably I'm counterfeiting the pickaxe to trash two hunting grounds. Uh, oh, you know what I can do? Oh, how do I do this effectively? I was gonna say I can I can counterfeit the pickaxe, but then I can <laughs> gain a pickaxe off of tools. But I can't do both of those things because if I counterfeit the pickaxe, the pickaxe dies. I could play the first pickaxe just once, then play tools gaining a pickaxe, then draw that pickaxe. Um, that's viable, I think. So probably I'm gaining a wealthy village and a pickaxe after these tools. And then I'm counterfeiting. I wanted to counterfeit the tools as well, right? Um, yeah, so maybe I Counterfeit a tools gaining hunting grounds, wealthy village, play a tools gaining, or play a pickaxe, trashing a hunting grounds, um, play sextant to top deck just the good stuff, uh, draw the hunting grounds. I don't know. Now, at this point, I'm probably overthinking it a bit. Kind of dutchy off the first one just to make this a little bit easier. Now we go. Counterfeit, counterfeit, tools, chalice. I like chalice, but not at the moment. This is not a good time for a chalice. Uh, pickaxe, hunting grounds, counterfeit. 
Shit, maybe it's just another hunt. I don't know. Um, sextant, discard, discard. Okay. Okay, draw. Counterfeit, pickaxe. I don't know if this is optimal or not. Almost certainly it's not. But it should get the job done. Well, there's the win. And pile of ropes. <laughs>